So as you're going to 2 Kings chapter 4, let's say it together. Lord, Lord may, the word change me. may the word change me. And let's look right at verse number 1 there. And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servants fear the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Will you read that line with me? What do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house, but sometimes a but is a good thing, but a jar of oil. And then he said, go and borrow vessels. Everybody say vessels. Borrow them from everywhere, from all of your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. In other words, get as many as you possibly can. Verse 4, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and then pour, pour it into all of those vessels. Now, notice this picture here. Pour it into all of those vessels and set aside the full ones. And so she went from him, shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she what? Poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, notice this, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God, and he said to her, Go and sell all of this oil. Go and sell it and pay your debt, and you and your sons shall live on the rest. Go and sell it, and whatever is left, you and your sons shall live on. If I will be allowed to this morning, if the Spirit will allow me to, I want to talk to you about the idea that the oil is flowing. Yes, the oil is flowing. Now, for all of you that are in this room, let me just take a moment and back up so that we can collectively come together as one body. Because when you preach and when you have church services, you understand that not everybody in this room is on the same level. Right. Not everybody has the same understanding, nor does everybody have the same belief. Right. So I want to make sure that before I get done with this, that those of you that's been in the Lord for 30 years gets the same thing as those who's been in for 30 days. Yes. So I got to take my time and do this right. But if you read this story for its face value, you will say to yourself, man, that's a really nice story. That's a good story. This, this prophet Elisha comes along and, 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 and this widow says, you know that my husband is dead. And most who study the Bible believe that this was Obadiah's wife. There's no absolute guarantee that says it was, but that's what they believe because he was the one that hid the prophets in the cave when Jezebel was trying to kill them. He was the one trying to take care of everybody, so he was the one spending all of his money trying to take care of the prophets. So you have this lady, she's a, she's a widow and she has two sons, and her debt is about to make the, the, the collectors come and take her sons as slaves. That was what happened in those days when you couldn't pay the debt. And, she, and Elisha says, what, what, what do you want me for? Why, why are you, what do you want me to do for you? And, and she says, well, I need your help. So Elisha asked this question, what do you have in your house? So I'm going to ask you today, before I get into this sermon, what do you have in your house? What do you have in your house? And she, she phrased it like this, nothing. Now, when you say nothing, it means nothing. He said, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing but a jar of oil. He said, okay, go get vessels. Go get empty vessels. Borrow as many as you can from your neighbors. And he specifically said, I don't want you to just borrow a few. Go get these vessels. He said, when you bring it in your house, 
just to make sure the debt collectors don't see what you're doing and everybody else doesn't see the miraculous, shut your door behind you, bring in all the empty vessels, and all you need to do is start pouring from the jar of oil that you have. And you think to yourself, this is the cool story because she began to pour and the Bible says that these vessels began to fill up and she would set them aside and keep pouring. But when there were no more vessels, when the vessels had all been used, when the vessels were all full, it says that the oil stopped flowing. When there are no more vessels, the oil will cease to flow. I'll explain this to you here in just a moment. And the Bible says that when it, when it happened and she got done, that she told Elisha and he said, go pay your debt. And listen, it wasn't that she just had enough to pay her debt. God doesn't just give you enough to pay your debt. He gives you enough to pay your debt and then some. And so he, he, he said, go and pay your debt and what you have left over. You see, that's an abundant kind of God. Amen. He, he, he's an on-time God. He's an abundant kind of God. And he, he's more than an enough kind of God. He, he doesn't just fill your cup. He fills your cup that it's overflowing. He fills your cup to where he gives you more than you need. Amen. That's just that's just the kind of God and I like to look at it this way that was just him showing off just a little bit but aren't you glad sometimes he shows off on your behalf yeah. so he said go and sell what you have pay your debt and you live on the rest so as we go through this story I'm going to try to explain this as best I can to you you have the desperation, Pastor Sheldon mentioned it a moment ago, the spirit of desperation in this room, and he was talking about hurt and brokenness. You have the desperation of a widow. All of you are not widows, but we have people in desperation kind of situations in this room. Desperation will cause you to get crazy. I didn't say go crazy. Desperation will cause you to do things that you normally wouldn't do. Desperation will cause you to knock down doors that you wouldn't have knocked down doors earlier. Desperation will cause you to become a different person. Now, desperation, if you want to go crazy, let it, let it make you go crazy. But I'm not looking to go crazy. I'm, I'm looking to get crazy. I'm looking to, to just, yeah, let me, let, me, let me just keep going. So you have this widow broken down, broke, literally going to lose her home, lose her sons, and down in verse number two is where Elijah said this. He said, what do you have in your house? So I want to ask you today and let's make, put, put a personal application to the question. What do you have in your house? And some of you are thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, is he about to literally ask me what I have in my house? No, I don't want to know exactly what is in your house. I, I need you to put a spiritual application to what I'm preaching you. And I also need you to put a New Testament application to what I'm preaching to you. How many of you understand that if it's in the Old Testament, it's a shadow of what is coming to be in the New Testament? Everything in the Old is a shadow of what comes in the New. So I need you to, to understand this question. What do you have in your house? You see, because sometimes the miracle that you seek, sometimes you feel like that miracle is a million miles away. Sometimes you feel like that other people possess something that you don't possess when in fact the miracle may actually dwell on the inside of your own home. And, and I'm not literally talking about the box that you live in, although it could be there, but sometimes it could just be here instead of other places. I, I have known people, and I'm not condemning this, I have known folks to drive thousands of miles to get to a man or woman of God because they felt like that man or woman of God had what they needed. I'm okay with you doing that, but I also ask you this question what do you have in your house what do you have in your house that was the question Elisha could have probably just performed a great miracle for her he could have probably just just paid the debt for her but sometimes instead of God just doing something for you he wants to ask you what do you have to help the situation for he said to Moses what do you have in your hand some of us, we come before God and we just want God to do everything and we want God to put it on a platter and bring it before us. And even God said to Moses, I, I could absolutely, Moses, do what I do anything I want and through you and for you, but I'm going to ask you this question, what do you have in your hand? 
If you're looking for a breakthrough and a miracle of God this morning, I ask you again, what do you have in your house? There's nothing wrong with going to other people and asking other people to help you, but sometimes you forget the inventory that you have. You have no faith in your abilities and no faith in what God has done for you. And I preached this on Friday night up in Pennsylvania. How many times did Jesus perform a miracle and he said, you're getting this according to your faith. By your faith, you are well because of your faith. You're well because of what you already had in your house. The miracle of God was already in you. The promise of God is already for you. You just had to realize what you had in your own house. What do you have in your house? And she said, I've just got a jar of oil. That's all I've got. Sometimes the greatest gifts that you have... You do not even recognize that they are the greatest gifts. You, sometimes we see as who we are. Some of you, if you would go home and look in the mirror and do inventory, you would not see much. But yet God sees a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And you may look in the mirror and think to yourself, I don't have much to offer. And God says you have everything to offer. What do you have in your house? Nothing. Many of you would answer God the same way or answer a man or woman of God the same way. Well, what what do you, if you need a miracle, what do you have that can help us get this miracle started? I, preacher, I've got nothing. I would guarantee that a good portion of this room would answer that way. I really don't have anything to give. I've got nothing really to give to the church and nothing to give to God. I've got nothing but... I do have a jar of oil. That's all I have in my possession. I'm going to tell you something this morning. When all you have is a jar of oil, you have everything. See, some of you, hopefully by the time I get done with this, you'll connect all the dots. Preacher, how do I have everything if I have a jar of oil? Noah sent out a dove, didn't he? Came back, sent out. When it finally came back, What did it have in its mouth? An olive branch. Where do you get oil from? When you crush the olive, the oil comes out. In fact, the dove was saying everything else on the planet is gone but the oil. When all you have is the oil, you have everything. We've always read it and just thought that the dove brought back an olive branch. It is important for us to know that even though the world is gone, as long as there is oil, you've still got everything. Why why do you say that, preacher? Because the oil represents the Holy Spirit. The oil of God represents the Holy Spirit. For those of you that may be younger in Christ, you can write that down. Anytime in the Bible when they talk about using the oil, they're referencing consecration. They're referencing the Holy Spirit. When oil was poured upon someone, it was an act as if the Spirit of God was being poured upon them. And when she said, all I have is a jar of oil, Elisha already knew what the oil represented. And it's not that she just had oil to pour in vessels. In fact, the oil was the blessing of God that says his mercies are new every morning. They do not dry up. They do not have an expiration date on them. And I'll say it again, as long as you have oil, you have have everything you need. What do you have? I, I have a I have a jar of oil. Elisha could have said, "Good, you have everything you need." So down in verse three, he said, "Borrow empty vessels. Don't just borrow empty vessels. Borrow as many as you can." And he goes on, and down in verse 5 is where he said, When you get those empty vessels, come in and shut the door. And when you shut the door, 
He had a command. Pour. 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 Discharge. Let it, let it flow from one container to another container. Oil does no good when it just sits in a container and goes nowhere. Oil needs to flow. Oil needs to be used. And you may say, preacher, if I use my oil, it will all be gone. As long as there's an empty vessel, the oil will never stop flowing. David said this in Psalm 92.10. He said in the Amplified, but my horn... My emblem of strength and power you have exalted like that of a wild ox. I am anointed with fresh oil for your service. Some of you may say, well, what does that have to do with anything? I'm glad you asked. (laughs) Because when Saul was anointed king, he was anointed with a flask. You look that up on your own time. When God rejected Saul and David was to be anointed king, God said to Samuel, get your horn and fill it with what? Oil. So the horn actually in Psalm 92.10, when you would take the horn, and I know many of you can't see this real well. Grab the video when you go home later this week. The horn... It was a picture of strength and honor. The flask was not. The flask was God saying, it's your king, but it's not my king. The horn is honor. And David said, you have poured fresh oil on me. Now, when Samuel came to anoint a king, Everybody came out but David because everybody else fit the profile. Everybody else was tall and handsome and had good looks and everybody else was popular and everybody else uh, maybe had the education and the money and, and you guys have read the story. I don't need to explain it to you. But the little, short, freckled faced redhead stayed out in the field. But God said that's the one. But when David came before Samuel, the Bible says that Samuel took the horn of oil and he turned it up and began to pour the oil over David. And David said, Lord, you have poured fresh oil upon me. And if you just read David, you might think to yourself, well, that's a cute story too. But what what you may not realize is in fact, Samuel symbolically was anointing David and baptizing him before the Holy Ghost came. He was, in fact, symbolically baptizing him and the Holy Ghost and the fire and the power of God because that's what the oil represented. Even in the Old Testament, before the Holy Spirit came, God said, I'll still not leave you nor forsake you. I will go everywhere you go. That's what the oil of God was for. But where there's oil, there's life. Where there is oil, there is life. Now, let me get to the next portion. When when he said in verse 3, borrow empty vessels. Borrow a lot. Then verse 5, pour oil from your jar into the empty vessels. If you don't read the Bible a whole lot, you don't know that the vessel is actually representation of you and I. So when you go back and read 2 Kings 4, every time you see the word oil, you need to put in there Holy Spirit. And every time you see vessel, you need to put in there you and I. He said, I want you to go. This is the spiritual application of of 2 Kings 4, the New Testament, the shadow of the Old Testament. This, This is what it all means. He said, go get empty vessels. And when you get empty vessels, begin to pour from the jar of oil so that the empty vessels will now, in fact, be full of the oil from the jar because as long as you have oil, you have everything. But oil without vessels is useless. 
You need a vessel. What does Romans chapter 12 tell us? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. This is your what? Reasonable service. Present your bodies. The Bible says, do you not know that you are the temple of what? The Holy Spirit. The Bible in the New Testament tells you, hey, 2 Kings chapter 4, those vessels is talking about you and me. It's not just a vessel. It's not just a jar. It's not just a vase that you go down to the store and buy for $12 and put some flowers in it. The, the, the meaning of the vessels is actually the Lord saying, you are the vessel. And as long as there is a vessel, the oil will continue to flow. Here sitting in this room this morning are the vessels of God. The oil of God is looking to flow throughout the land. The oil of God is looking to flow through the earth today. I don't know if the saints of God, if the church of God, if the kingdom of God has enough vessels for the oil to continue to flow. Well, preacher, on a given Sunday, you come in here and you look at a couple hundred people. You, isn't that enough vessels? Vessels sitting in church doesn't mean that they're available vessels. But I want you to notice this. Covenant has been uh, announced to be on a new assignment. Covenant is a church that desires to grow. We are not the church that desires to be the same as we were six months ago. And we are not the church that desires to be the same as we were a year ago. We want to advance. We want to do more for the kingdom of God. But I'm going to tell you, so many times people think, well, the church will advance based upon the preacher. The church will advance based upon the worship team. According to 2 Kings chapter 4, the kingdom of God and the church will advance based upon the availability of empty vessels that that are available for the oil to be poured into them. The oil cannot flow unless there's an empty vessel. Now you may say to yourself, preacher, don't we have empty vessels in this room? Yes. As a matter of fact, the oil that I have, when I use it, I need more poured into me. That's why the Bible says continuously pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Continuously pray to be filled with the oil of God. But just because a vessel that's sitting next to you is empty doesn't mean that they're available to be poured into. I would hope today and, and maybe pray today that all of us would recognize who we are in God, recognize that we are vessels of God, recognize Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, I, I, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you would present your bodies therefore to God, holy, acceptable, and he says that's your reasonable service. You're ambassadors of God, are you not? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, are you not? The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. But if you do not have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, you are therefore not saved. You are therefore not going to heaven. In order to get to heaven, you have to have the oil running through you. Yes. He said, go. Can you imagine this widow sitting in her house? All the jars are in, and all the neighbors are like, sure, you can have my vessels. I've got nothing to put in them. What do you want them for? Uh, I'm not sure. Mommy wants them. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Imagine, can, you, can you, those of you who are able to do it, think in your spirit right now. Imagine her sitting in her house knowing if this works, God will perform a miracle. If it doesn't, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And the first empty vessel that comes before her, she begins to pour her jar 
And she says to herself, now, if I pour out eight ounces, I know that eight ounces will go from here to there. But what happens when those eight ounces are gone? And she tips over her jar and begins to pour. I want you to picture in the spirit that after 15 or 20 minutes, her wrist is now getting sore because the oil does not stop flowing. She tips it back and she moves that aside and she says, bring me another vessel. And she continues to pour. And the oil does not run dry. This jar does not empty itself because as long as there are empty vessels, there is oil. And they move that one aside. She's got one brother moving them while another brother brings in another vessel. Amen. What I'm trying to get you to understand, even in covenant church, amen, we can talk all that we want, but the oil will only flow as long as there are empty vessels in this room that are willing to say, Holy Spirit, here I am. Send me and I'll go. You have got to be in this room and you've got to be praying for the oil of God to be poured upon you. You have got to be the recipient. You've got to be the receiver. You can actually cap it off and not allow the Holy Spirit to be poured into you. But if you will allow, now picture this. Picture your church. If you're a part of this church, if you're part of another church, think of your church. If the oil is the Spirit, and it will not stop flowing as long as there's an empty vessel. Imagine what happens in your life and in your church and your community if everybody in this room will absolutely give their lives to Jesus Christ and then everybody who professes to be a Christian will say to the Holy Spirit, oh, feel me, my cup runneth over, amen. Isn't that what the Bible says? You anoint my head with oil, my cup, I want you to think to yourself. Now, norm normally, this is the part of the sermon where I throw a chair, jump a pew, scream, and snot and snort and shout. <laughs> Not today. Imagine how your life is different if you allow the oil to be poured into you. Pre and some of you may be thinking, preacher, I don't get that. I don't know how I can get oil. The oil is the Holy Spirit. Imagine how different your life is when you allow the Spirit of God to abide in you and become so deep in you that it continues to pour in you and the oil going in you also goes out of you because out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's going to flow. It's going to be poured in you and it'll flow out of you. Therefore, as a vessel, you have to keep coming back under the spout and saying, feel me again because as long as you're an empty vessel, as long as you're emptying out, God can pour it back into you. I don't know if you picture this or not, but I want covenant to be a church where the oil is continuously flowing, where the oil is continuously being poured out. The oil of God is continuously moving. I don't want you to get full so you can just keep it to yourself. I want you to get full so you can impact your home and, and your school and your job and your community. But you first got to take the top off and let the Lord. He said, if you drink of this water, you'll thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I will give you, in fact, he was not just saying water. In fact, he was saying, if you'll take the water, the oil that I give you, you will never thirst again. How is it that I can drink this water and never thirst again? Because it never stops pouring as long as vessels are empty and available for God to pour in. I like it. Hmm. When she said, in verse number six, there is not another vessel. Look at this. There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. The oil stopped. The dangers of the oil stopping. The dangers of the oil not being present in your life. The dangers of the oil not being present in my life. The dangers of there not being any oil 
in our churches? How does the lampstand continue to have a flame without oil in the house? There's got to be oil for there to be light. There's got to be oil for there to be a flame. There's got to be oil for there to be life. And in order for there to be oil in covenant church, in your house, in your marriage, in your relationships, in your job, in your school, in Marion County, in order for the elections to go right, in order for the United States of America to return to God, it's you, you've got to stop pointing your finger at politicians and, and pointing your finger at the news and pointing your finger at this and that and say is this vessel willing to let the oil of God be poured into me am I a vessel that's carrying the oil of God or or have you had an oil leak and you've lost all of your oil and you're just a, a, a dried up vessel and, and sometimes we become dry and we and we just don't use it some of you are being deceived by the enemy and the enemy wants to keep you sidelined. He he wants to tell you all the different reasons why you can't serve and why you can't go and why you shouldn't give your life to Jesus. That's the enemy's job. The enemy wants to crawl into your oil pan and, and stab it and let all of your oil flow out so that you'll have an oil leak because when all your oil, oil comes out your motor stops running. It locks up and there's nothing driving you anymore. The enemy knows if he takes the oil he takes your life but God says today is there any more vessels that will allow me to pour into them the oil of God used for consecration dedication ordination the oil of God being poured out upon us I want us today to be as David I want us today to say I am anointed with fresh oil. I want us to be as Aaron and Aaron's sons and everything that Aaron had. Aaron had to be had to have that oil poured upon him. I want you to imagine. I, I have a small horn today. If I would have asked one of the elders to bring their shofar and they would have bring the shofar. I'm talking about a, a, a horn that's, that's a couple feet, maybe two feet long. I want you to imagine that David got down on bended knees and Samuel took that horn full of oil and just begin to pour it over the head and the body of David. You see, when the Holy Spirit baptizes you, you guys know this. He does not just cover one part of you or another part of you. He immerses you with the, everything that he has. And when the oil is poured up on you, listen, if you are empty and you are a vessel that does not have the oil of God, I'm just going to be honest. What actually good are you as a vessel anyways? If you are not, if you're not keeping something, if something's not in you, what good is it for you to be a vessel anyways? Amen. There are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. You guys know this word today, but I want to encourage all of you that's in here today, do not leave this place without letting the oil of God be poured upon you and in you. And you may say, well, what do I have to offer? If there is in this room but a jar of oil, God can Feel you. Preacher, that sounds all good and it sounds great, but and you have all these reasons why you shouldn't, why you can't, why you've thought about it. I refuse. I'll do everything that I can. I can't force any of you to be filled with oil. Can't force any of you. But I'm going to do everything that I can as long as I'm here, as long as I've got breath, and as long as the Lord will allow me. I'm going to do everything I can to continue to try to get empty vessels under the spout of the oil of God that is flowing down. <clears throat> Preacher, but I thought, I thought covenant was just, man, I thought it was on fire. I thought it was rocking. It, it, it is for the, for the most part. But, Alan, we haven't reached full capacity to, with the oil. We've got some great people in this room, great people that aren't here today, great, good, good people. There's some godly people in this room right now that are called and gifted 
And, but the oil's not full. They're not in service. They've been wounded. They've taken a back seat. They're, whatever the reason may be, I could go all day. You guys know how that works. I want us. How is it that we can impact the world? Because when all of you are full, the oil that's left over is what we share with the world. That's what we live on. Yeah. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Thou, I'm going to say it again. Thou anointest my head with oil. Isn't it funny how that he just comes right back around and says, My cup overfloweth. You ever read that and wonder to yourself, Why does having anything about anointing his head have to do with anything with a cup? I'm a vessel. I have not always been a vessel of honor. It's quiet sometimes when you start telling the truth on people. All of you, every single one of you, from teenagers to middle age to seasoned people, <laughs> from zero to a hundred, doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your gender. The oil of God is in this place. The oil of God is in many believers in this room. Do you want the oil of God? Do you want the power of God? Do you want the assurance of God's blessing upon your life? Do you want the assurance of heaven? I want the oil of God. I, I, I want to go from the Old Testament consecration to the New Testament ordination, from the Old Testament ordination to the New Testament consecration. I want to dedicate Covenant Church and everything that is in it. I want every one of us, amen. I want some of us just whenever we go to restaurants that the oil of God is permeating out of us, amen. I want people that whenever they, whenever they go to shake our hands that all of a sudden it just feels oily. I want people whenever they come into this place, amen, to smell the fragrance of God. I, I want us to be like the women that went before Jesus and broke their alabaster box and poured their oil upon him, amen. I may not have a crown right now that I can lay before him, but I've got some oil that I can share. And when I share my oil with him, when I share my oil with you, I can then go back under the jar of oil and say continue to fill me because now I'm not fully empty I'm half empty amen how many of you feel up when you get halfway empty amen God just go ahead and fill me up because when there is no oil when there is no oil thank you Holy Spirit when there is no oil Remember the jars that they went and borrowed? The only reason the neighbors discarded them and got rid of them was because they were useless. Wow. The neighbors are like, sure, you can have them because they're no good to me. They're empty and I've got nothing to put in them. They're useless. Remember the parable when the Lord said, cast him out, and all he was guilty of was doing nothing? Imagine the empty vessels that could be filled by the power of God even right now. And I'm not, I hope you understand today this sermon is trying to encourage you, but empty vessels for the kingdom, no matter how much I love you and how much the Lord loves you, empty vessels are useless. The Lord loves them. The Lord wants them to be full. He'll never stop loving you. But empty vessels can't be used for the kingdom. Empty vessels, empty vessels can't have honor because they're empty. Some of us, sometimes we get empty and we know we're empty. Some folks get empty and they don't realize it until all the oils ran out. Doesn't matter which you are today. Today is your day to be reminded that the oil of God can be poured upon you. 